So welcome back uh, to our series about uh, licenses and copyright. Today we will be talking about the GNU licenses, uh, just an overview. So let's take it away. Exactly. So GNU licenses are, are strong copyleft licenses in, in many cases. So, so the GNU licenses come from the Free Software Foundation. Uh, that was founded by Stallman, which we covered in an earlier episode. Um, and that foundation also funds the GNU project, uh, which is a, a source of many of the GNU tools for, for, for use of space in, in Linux. So that's why it's sometimes referred to as GNU Linux, because the, the non-kernel parts come from this project. Um, the, the Free Software Foundation defines four freedoms that, we, that we've also talked about. Um, so the freedom to run the program for any purpose, the freedom to study the program and change it to your wish, the freedom to redistribute and make copies of the program, and the freedom to improve the program and release your improvements. So to redistribute a modified version to the public. Uh, and this is sort of the basis for the licenses. So the GNU licenses are triggered by distribution and and there are a number of different GNU licenses so distribution varies a bit in between them uh, but it's important to, to recognize that the GNU license doesn't really apply when you're just having the code at home uh, but it's when you actually distribute it to a neighbor or user or a, a fellow developer uh, and basically there are four variant of the GPL. It, it's the, the GPL itself, the GNU public license, which is a strong copyleft license. Uh, the LGPL, which is the lesser or the library GPL. Uh, the Afero GPL is interesting um, because it redefines distribution to, to sort of address the problems with uh, with open source or free software being distributed as a service. Uh, and then we have a documentation license, the, the GFDL. But let's look at these in, in more detail. So you might recognize these diagrams. So basically you have your software, which is a piece of software you write that depends on a piece of licensed code or the work, I think it's defined as in the license. And then you can make modifications to the licensed code as well. So GPL is really easy because that means that if you depend on the license code, your code is also GPL or has to be, uh, and your modifications also has to be GPL. What does the arrow down mean in this case? Why is it from your software to license code? So, so let's say that the license code is uh, a library of some sort. Um, give me a good example of a of GPL licensed library. Uh, libc. Libc has an exception, I think. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's a library and your software okay. uses that library. Uh, so the license code is probably an SO file on your hard drive and your modifications is code changes that you use to compile a new SO file while your software is just your binary that then links to that SO file. And the modifications in, in this picture is the modifications to the library which you did. Exactly. So you fix a bug or you change the behavior slightly. And then that is obviously GPL because that's a change to the license code. And, and that's really the difference to the LGPL. Uh, because that I, I personally think that the, the library GPL, it says more about it than the lesser GPL. Uh, because if the license code is a library, what you what we want to get out of that is that the modifications or improvements to the library itself should be distributed further and sort of be to the benefit of the of the community, while your software that de depends on the library isn't as important for the community. So it is allowed to to stay closed source or be open source with different license or or whatnot. The the I, I think I think a good way to think about how to pronounce the LGPL is it is not the lesser GPL, it's the lesser general public license. It's it's not as general as the GPL. Sure, yeah. And then moving on to, to the, the more <laughs> The, the, the even stronger the I more would say, GPL <laughs> the more GPL <laughs> no the, the, the even stronger uh, license I would say in my view the, the AGPL so so Afero Inc 
was a company founded by a guy called Henry Poole in 2001. And he wanted to solve the issue that if you, if you take a GPL based software and, and use it in your, on the server side, that doesn't trigger distribution because it's still on your machine as, as you as a developer. So the user has no freedoms from that. The, the code does not have to come along or be distributed along with, with mm -hmm. the service, um, as there is no code distribution. Uh, so, so what is, has been added to AGPL is that when you're interacting with it remotely through a computer network, you also must have an opportunity to receive the corresponding source code uh, using a network server at no charge. Uh, and then it also says through some standard or customary means and so on. So you can't really just fax it over or something. It, it needs to be convenient. Uh, but it basically expands on the notion of distribution, I would say. But does it then, in comparison to the LGPL and GPL, does it cover more? So your software, like you had in the uh, the both were green, your software and the library were G needed to be GPL. Does this mean in AGPL also that your software needs to be AGPL? It needs to be GPL at least. Um, I see. So, so it basically, when when you're using a GPL version software to build a server side component and, and then expose that function to an end user, that isn't considered distribution because the binary still runs on, on yeah. the server. Uh, and what this changes is really to expand on the notion of where, where the user can be and, and where the GPL triggers. Um, these are also a bit tricky because in, in GPL v2, there was an additional section while in GPL v3 and a GPL v3, this is a, a separate paragraph, so to speak. It has its its own number, and GPL and AGPL refer to each other uh, to be compliant, while the version 2, it was sort of a patch to the original GPL v2. I see. One of the bigger uh, known problems is, uh, for example, when Amazon uh, offers different software as a service, uh, where they don't pay for the software, so it, it there is no money exchange, obviously, because they can just use the uh, GPL software. But also, uh, this makes it impossible for the companies uh, to make money on it by uh, hosting the uh, this software for themselves and making money out of it. So it kind of became... Uh, a tool for companies to also en uh, enforce things like this to to be able to s themselves host and offer services which they then release as AGPL instead of someone else just doing it and keeping all the changes. Exactly. I, I We're drifting towards common clause, which I think is a topic for a completely different uh, episode. But yes, I mean, this would probably not be possible for someone like Azure or Amazon to just incorporate in their cloud offerings, uh, especially since DPL is a strong copyleft license, it would affect that their integration into their system would also be a GPL at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess the problem for the companies that wanted to go down the path of common clause is that it, it, it I think this is incompatible with sort of an open core model. That's something we can talk more about as well. But but basically, you you have to distribute everything uh, and and not only a selected subset of the functionality. Okay. Yes. So, moving on to to the last one, we have the GFDL. Uh, so the the GNU free documentation license, which is a copyleft license for documentation. And there are a number of things that are familiar from the GPL licenses. So the derivative works, but what you, your modification, so to speak, must be made available on the same license. You need to copy the full license text and the copyright notices and, and so on. Uh, you cannot use DRM with GFDL based documents, which, which means that they need to be copyable and editable. Um, and all previous works must be attributed. Uh, one of the challenging thing is that you can also mark sections as invariant, so so that you cannot change them. Uh, 
so basically you can have like a a chapter in your book that nobody may change even though it's uh, it's copyleft licensed and everything else can be modified um and and this makes it incompatible with the gpl which is kind of interesting now the gpl is for code and this is for documentation so it's not a big problem but it's still interesting to me that they are incompatible how many sections can you mark as invariants I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think there is a limitation. I, to be honest, I don't know, but I don't think there is a limitation. So, I mean, if you, if you want to mess with people, you could possibly mark the entire thing as invariant then. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then you end up with like a, well, open source license instead of a free license. Yeah, or even... Yeah, but Since because it's not software... It, it's not even open source. It's... You, you can, it's a share alike license, but you can't modify anything, so to speak. Oh, yeah. It's like shareware. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Like pe pe peek at the source code uh, license. Yeah. But they, they also have a clause, which is interesting, where, where you can see the documentation sort of enters the physical world, uh, where they define that if you distribute more than 100 copies, um, you need to provide a machine readable copy. Uh, and this machine readable copy need to be editable and, and sort of useful to, to do the modifications and redistribution. So, so I would say that this even implies if you, if you distribute more than a hundred PDFs, for instance, since they are hard to edit and, and sort of use to create a derived work. Um, do we know the date of when this was, uh, like created? Because it's kind of, I mean, in the t in today's world, it seems like outlandish. Like if you have more than one hundred copies, you need to do this and that. Uh, is it a, a a really old one or is it something newer? I actually don't know. Um, okay, and I think it's the license I left out from the from the timeline. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but let's <laughs> let's add in a, a little cliff there when we explain that. I can check it. Um, but it, yeah, it, also comparing this to other licenses, this one is very similar to, to the Creative Commons buy and share alike. I don't think it's as explicit in the, the whole DRM stuff and, and it, invariants and so on. Uh, but from a practical perspective, it, it's very close. You need to attribute and you need to redistribute under the same license, uh, so to speak. And, and in my, uh, experience the the creative common licenses are more common for for documentation style contents mm -hmm. but but coming forward to to the actual timeline i mean we've we've spoken about the history of this so, so we know it's from the 80s so gpl version 1 was released in 81 89 uh, then in 91 a clause called uh, freedom or death was added uh, section 7 to the gpl v2 uh, it basically means that if you are restricted by other laws so so that you cannot satisfy all the, the obligations of the license, uh, then you may not license the code, basically. So, so, so if you happen to live in a restriction where you can't use the code for any purpose, for instance, then tough luck, then you live in the wrong place, so you can't use the code at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's, I would say it's a clarification or a reaction. Uh, I don't know the exact background to adding it. Uh, Along with that, the LGPL v2 was also added. Um, and then in 99, the LGPL was, let's call it clarified. So, so they added a, a section 6b that explicitly says, I, I mean, we had the, the boxes, your code, depending on the, on the licensed work. Um, and they say that a suitable shared library mechanism is, is an acceptable way to do this. Um, this was sort of implied in the two, not dot one, but in two dot one, it was clarified. Uh, mm. Technically, you can you can even fulfill the LGPL while doing static linking, um, but then you need to distribute your object files so that somebody else can do the linking because the the license doesn't really care how the linking is happening. It's just that the user should be able to change and update the GPL part of the work, so to speak. This is, I think, how Apple goes around the whole problem because they only have static linking in their iOS. Uh, there's no share, uh, sh shared, uh, 
what is the other one called? Uh, shared linking? No. <laughs> dynamic linking. Yeah, oh, dynamic linking. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and and this is one of the things I guess they they use. Exactly. To do it. So so what you have to do is you need to create a library out of your app, the, the proprietary parts of your code. You can strip it from debug symbols and so on, but it needs to be possible to link it to a new version of the of the LGPL version of the library. Um, and then looking forward to the 2000s, in 2007, GPL v3 came along, um, which is a, a completely different license, I would say, to some respects. It, it defines how to arbitrate uh, license infringements and so on. Uh, but it also covers some things that, that are big enough for us to dive into in separate sections, like uh, patents, clauses, uh, digital rights management, and, and uh, TVOization. Uh, but these are really big topics that we need to dive into individually. Uh, there's also I had a qu quick uh, look in the Wikipedia, and the GFDL, just to add to the timeline, was uh, released as a draft in '99, uh, and then the latest uh, version 1.3 is from 2008. Cool. It could be worth. And some to know. say that we should call it digital restriction management. <laughs> yeah, I mean the DRM abbreviation is is really unfortunate since it's, it's also part of the graphic stacks and Linux systems. Yeah, and so on. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> uh, th there is one more thing that we need to to be aware of. So since there are different versions of the GPL, um, you can also license under. GPL version something and later. Um, uh, this is usually entered as GPL v2 plus, for instance, or GPL v3 plus, which means that you, you can, you allow the usage, usage of a later version of the GPL, which means that you trust the, the FSF to actually release sane versions of the GPL. You really put your, all your, your assets in their lap by doing so. Um, Another thing around the FSF, and this is, is especially when you want to put your code into the GNU project explicitly, um, that you can also sign over the, the copyright and assign it to the FSF. Uh, and the background to this is that it's only the copyright holder that can sort of go after someone infringing the license. So, so either you have to defend your own license and sort of pay for lawyers and go to court and all of that, or you can assign the copyright to FSF before the infringement happens, and that will allow the FSF to defend the license. Um, oh, so it needs to be before it happens, not afterwards. Okay. That's the way I understand it. I mean, otherwise it's, yeah. yeah uh, otherwise you sort of change the license holder retroactively. Because it, it's the uh, copy you distributed that counts. Ah, I see. Okay. I, I would guess. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to add I, that myself as well. As far as I remember, uh, Linus Torvalds put GPL version 2 and he didn't trust uh, for the plus. And he seems to be quite happy about it because it doesn't mean that Linux itself uh, can be distributed our, under version 3, which he seems not to like. Exactly. There, there are some different views there, definitely. So so the Linux kernel is GPL v2 without the plus. It's only version 2. And it's on purpose. So if you are thinking about doing this plus thing, think twice, uh, because it might mean the same thing which it meant to Linus, where he really was happy that he didn't trust <laughs> the <laughs> FSF. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the FSF can change the license and, and the FSF is a big organization with multiple members. So it's, yeah, yeah you, you don't know where they are heading. But that's a quick introduction to the various GNU licenses. Uh, we will dive into them in going forward as well. Uh, if there's any specific thing you want us to bring up, just ping us in the comments or on, uh, on Twitter and, and we can do that early. Okay, then thank you all and uh, see you soon.